in the final days, the Silmarils will be gathered together from the earth, from the sky, and from the waters. back to middle earth yahoo <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while it's been a year it's been a year since you guys oh last um last ventured in erador and rohan and <clears> through <throat> orion and mirkwood and i don't know and all them but all the other places across the misty yeah, mountains we were all over the place weren't we? we're everywhere everywhere so it's uh it's been a while since you guys have been back to middle earth but this is one year later now this is just a catch up for everybody <clears throat> the war of the ring is over yeah mm -hmm. okay the war of the ring is over the um king uh theoden has uh was <coughs> tragically killed in the battle um struck down by the witch king of agmar on the battlefields of pelnor which is a uh, open um Flatland between the outer wall and the inner wall of Minas Tirith. Um, and Queen Eowyn reigns in his absence at the moment, although she's not actually coronated as being the queen that falls upon the nephew of King Theoden, which is Oromir. But he's presently at the moment off in Dol Amroth, um, Restoring order to the seaports that were um, attacked and uh, pillaged by the Corsairs of the south. Um, and he's not due back for at least another year. So yeah. Queen Iremia rules and uh, governs, I would say, Rohan in her yeah. absence. She's formed strong bonds with uh, Thabad. <laughs> uh, one female to another female has <laughs> strengthened those... Uh, those bonds although there is still kind of a slight issue with um uh, like disturbances in the dunland area amongst the smaller tribes um those that sided with saruman have been shunned uh, to those that sided with thabard and with rohan and that has brought a civil war of unrest on a small scale across the dunland region the orcs seemingly still reside inside Moria. Um, the disbanding of the uh, Dark Lord has not immediately put an end to all evil across Middle Earth. It still resides, just like at the end of the War of the Wrath in the First Age, where the capture of Melklaw, there was many that escaped and hid in the depths of Middle Earth, in the pits of Utumno and Angbang at that time and they now reside in the depths of Mordor and in Moria and of Isengard and Dol Guldor and Khan Doom in Agmar as well as numerous other places Orcs have now um, stopped following their former leaders and have formed their own bands and tribes clans as such and uh, now out fending for themselves there is um, uh, adventurers now have taken to the road and have um, invaded these former lands of the Dark Lord 
for treasures, um, for riches, and for personal gain and things like that. Uh, once former owners of magical items now passed, their magical items now up for grabs, and many relics and important items have fallen into the hands of imbeciles and people that don't know the power that they yield. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's been a year since the end, since uh, you last uh, saw um, Saruman and Morinstar battle on the bridge. The whereabouts are unknown to you. And it's been a year since you've seen that that uh, that fault line open up in the grey wood at Kalost and what demonic creatures live below there show themselves. It's been quiet for a considerable length of time. Life has continued. Your towns have developed. Some some as you've planned, some not quite have gone the way you wanted them to do. Um Minus Turth is still rebuilding itself. It takes a long time to rebuild a, a city that's stood for for a millennia. Through um, the test of time. Yep. Yeah, um to be rebuilt. After its uh, its attack by uh by the forces of uh, of Sauron. Osgiliath took the brunt of most of the punishment in the river Anduin, the city on the island between Mordor and I in Manisterth, and that is also still being patrolled. Um, one of those things that's a constant reminder to everybody is the sun keeps rising in the east, keeps rising over Mordor. Just a subtle reminder to those that served and those that that battled the forces of darkness that. It's never always over. The sun always sets in the Undying Lands in the West, reminding you that also also be always be vigilant and always uh, keep an eye for a rising new power. The wedding of Aragorn and Arwen was attended by Estelfair, by Alwi. Mm-hmm. Theodore sent his regrets restru- re- rebuilding and restructuring of Kalost the regarrison of Karnhard in preparation for a for a very severe winter um, kept him away from the festivities yeah, no drink for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a year it's been a year and they've been away for, they've been away um, for a for a while but they have returned now have returned back to Maristareth as man and wife. Um, Queen, uh, King, Queen of Gondor and King of Gon. And also, more so than that, they've returned as King and Queen of the reunited regions, kingdoms as such. And they've, for, they've forged strong bonds with people as far as the south and people as far as the north, the east. In the west. The land of Mordor is still unoccupied at the moment, however Aragorn has issued um, scouting parties, excessively large scouting parties, to seek out and try and retrieve lost pieces of knowledge and information from that realm um, to bring about further study and understanding in preparation and also as a countermeasure to anybody else who might think about filling the void that Sauron has left behind. The Nine Riders have been disbanded, although they cannot actually be destroyed or vanished from the world. They seem to have just slipped back into the the mists of the ether, not knowing whether they'll ever be returned or summoned. Um, It could be a considerable time before we see them again, but most certainly won't be the last time. <clears throat> There's a great much loss across it all, but this is a time of of, uh, of celebration, of renewal. This is the beginning of the Fourth Age. First year of the Fourth Age. The Age of Man. The Elves are still leaving Middle-earth, even though the imminent danger has passed. 
they realize that everything that they've constructed in the middle earth everything they've worked for and built over the many many centuries is no longer and uh, they no longer have claim over it and they are forfeiting everything that they've built all their kingdoms all their possessions and everything like that to return back to the undying lands the lands of Amen in the Valinor to um, take up their seats in the halls of Manwi in the light of Ilivata. so it's been a year Aragorn now when I've returned and you're being summoned you find yourselves you're in a very large hall very large marble hall could easily accommodate probably the the wealthiest and the most powerfulest people across all of Middle Earth in its in its huge chambers in in Minas Tirith. It's on the highest tier of Minas Tirith, on the end of the White Mountains. Ceiling is approximately 40, 50 feet high. These huge columns, numerous in in size, are uh, of a black and white marble. The floor is black. And there's wooden, like almost like cathedral pew seats set up facing you in one particular direction with a huge throne at the far end. And you're all sat next to each other. In the 15th or 16th row, you can't really count. So many people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're attending the, the coronation of the married couple. It's a second ceremony they have to go through. Um, in which case the, the 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 senior leaders or the the garrison commanders and the the the, the guild holders of Minas Tirith have to swear allegiance to Arwen. Um, after they've already sworn allegiance to Aragorn II. Um, and you're going through this ceremony where people are being called forth, and this is this is also a ceremony of um, of reward for people that have fought bravely in the uh, the Battle of Pelnor Fields in the. In, in, in the Battle of the Black Gate. Um, and you hear some people being the equivalent of a knighthood, taking part. Mm. Uh, with the blessings of Arwen and uh, of Aragorn in thanks. Um, and he, they, they receive um, a, a, like a sash, where they hang over one shoulder, hangs down one side, and it's kind of like it's like a deep blue with gold trim on it, and it's got like a, a white. Um, tree embroidered you know towards the bottom half of the front um, and these people are recognized as being heroes of the War of the Ring and you're watching the people go past as they've been called and there's various um, names being shouted and um, you're all sat next to each other and uh, seems like you're sat there for what seems quite a while you seem to lose interest in look at the the people around you, you look at the marble, you look at the floor, and you look at the, the decoration. Huge statues to the left and to the right on the far side of uh, the former kings of Gondor, going back centuries and centuries. Um, you can see some plaques on the wall. You notice a little bit of graffiti carved into one of the seats nearby, in the back of one of the seats, where you notice that a young child probably just lost interest in something that was going on and decided to carve his name into the back of somebody's chair. <laughs> <clears throat> Surprisingly, considering the size of the actual hall, you can still hear quite clearly what's being shouted and there's some trumpeteers like over your left shoulder as you look up you can see there's a gallery it's above you, like a walkway area, and there's some trumpeteers and there's various banners hanging all the way around this room. And they're from all different regions and all different areas. And I guess it's a representation of everybody who seems to recognize as uh, Aragorn being the, the true rightful um, ruler and the heir to Isildur. Um, so I have this moment to be able to sit and talk. You notice there's a few other people like just have a little murmur amongst themselves, passing the time, just getting acquainted with each other while they go through this addressing system of, of rewarding all these people that fought bravely and, um, and it's not just normal soldiers either. There's people that open their homes up to um, refugees, and there's, there's people that um, 
did some heroic deeds, did some healing, and did some firefighting, and there's lots of lots of things going on, and everybody seems to be getting rewarded for everything that they did during the, the time of the War of the Ring. But yet at this moment, you're all sitting amongst on the, each other on this this you know, very uncomfortable wooden bench. There's no pillars. Um, you're dressed in your, your normal best clothes. You can assume that you're wearing your best clothes. And you haven't really had an opportunity to talk to each other. Um, so you've got a, got a little time before you can before we move on just to I, I have a question is this mm-hmm. everybody or is it just Estelle Estelle alone oh no it's all th- it's all four years it's all four years yeah oh okay <laughs> it's all four years all four years are all seem to be sitting you another question then yes who uh, who is it with us right? can you say person by person so is Freya with me uh, Freya is not with you Marisha with me Freya is not with you always with you Marisha is not with you Marisha is back in Kalos. Freya is back in Kalos. Um, you are there. Estelle's there. Uh, Olwi is there. Morwen is not there. Uh, Nostra El is not there. Uh, Dylan Trust is there, and Zabi is there. You're all sat pretty much next to each other, and you're all kind of in the roundabout row, 15, 16, 17, somewhere around about there, on the left-hand side. Um, if you're going to start talking or doing something, you can probably get away with a good, good deal of amount of stuff without being discovered. Oh. I lean down so I can see everyone down the road. Okay. Well, you just lean out. <laughs> yeah, just to give a little wave. Because okay. I would have been the one with like a little book out and I write like certain things every so often. <laughs> you got a diary or something. And I'll spot the odd thing that might be happening that no one will notice, you know, like the odd guy picking his nose. Okay. Like, I know picking your nose. I, I, I don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Mementos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you, you, yeah, you're sitting there. You're like making little notes, little diary entries, little journal kind of things. Always. Theo look- is waving in the down the aisle. <laughs> yeah. Always kind of leans out and waves back. <laughs> oh my god, I got away. Always so waving back. <laughs> yeah. As she, as she kind of like waves back, you see that she retracts her hand and then kind of makes the crazy sound. You know, like the crazy symbol, you know, like waves her finger around next to the side of her head. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's telling you're crazy. Oh! <laughs> oh. Okay. Telling me I'm crazy, or is she telling that saying? This is crazy. crazy. I, you, this yeah, is I leave crazy. that entirely oh. up to you to decide. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go thinking that she's saying this is crazy because not she hasn't pointed at me and gone crazy. She's gone crazy like this situation is crazy. It's like yeah, and no, I just nod. I'm just looking like <laughs> notes. <clears throat> okay. Who's next to me on my other side. Um, you've got Zabi on one side. Um, and then you've got Dylan Trust. Can we draw this for a second so I can oh, actually God. spatially okay. be aware yeah. of who is this? Sure, then, like, who is where, so... Just use the initials. Yeah, okay. It's a Z, is it's it? Zab- yeah. Zabby. I know, it's oh, a two. I guess it's a two. <laughs> you got Zabby? Okay, we got Zabby. So it's Zabby Theo. Zabby Theo. Don't trust. So, Zabby... Zabby... Theo. Theo. Don't trust. D. Then you got Estelle. That looks so wrong. Then Estelle. Right. And then o- ah. and then O. Oh. Is that an O or? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's an O. It's an O. Olwy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got our new name. What's <laughs> Theo? <laughs> what? And the number, number fact, just to make sure we are on a seating plan that we all would have agreed on because of the way we might have come in the room. Would Dylan Trust literally sit next to me? Yeah, yeah. Probably not. It was one of the situations where it was just like, look, you know when you're going into like um, a function or something like that, it's like just, just get in there and fill the seats. That's the kind of situation you were like, okay, next <laughs> next five people, get in there. So you really had no choice. You really had no I choice. Not going to change seats. If you want to change seats, you can try changing seats, you know. But, you know. <laughs> Maybe Dylan Trust will be like, Can you swap with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
when I'm literally right next to you and, and I'm that, like, uh, that is so insulting. Yeah, and that's the, and that that's the way you're facing. <laughs> that's the way you're facing, yeah. So, Fight. You, so we're all sat next to each other. This is where he's a little bit, there's people like, after all we, there's like a whole, like number five or six people. These these seats are fairly long. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I'm, I'm not sitting next to randoms, it's fine. No, 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 you're all sat there, you're all kind of like, yeah. Um, I, I, I sort of go between the and the and to say, it's good to see you both, by the way. We'll have to speak a little bit later on. I don't think this is probably the best time to have a conversation, but... <clears throat> yeah. I, I do the face of, on. yes, you are right, Theo. <laughs> the face of, yes, you are right, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> the face. Okay. Zabby just like waves her hand a bit, like you know, like saying like the "don't worry" thing, and she just whispers, it prob "That's probably a good idea." Okay. Um. So yeah, you sit there as patiently as you possibly can. Like, you know, you you start to lose sensation. Which chair in front of us has the vandal one? Oh, wait. Who has it? the vandal? Um, in front of it's in front of all we. Was it all we? Well, that's something to debate. You're not for sure if always actually the one that's carved the <laughs> dead on the graffiti, <laughs> or if it's I mean, been there it for quite a me. while. Could have been it quite a while. Been me, so. yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks like. What does it say on the carving? You're not really like certain what it is. You you kind of think it looks like um like a stick figure, knifing another stick figure. <laughs> Always handy work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try <coughs> attempting to redraw one. Like, yeah, like, like, like one, I... one stick figure, like taking a knife to another stick figure. That, that, that's what it looks like from your point of view, anyway. Oh, dear lord. Okay. And um, unless it's like, like weird language, but we don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to take a picture of what I drew in my book <laughs> to represent. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, this this thing goes on for like 20, 30 minutes or so, and it's like, oh my god, are they ever going to get through with all these people? It's like, they're gonna, and they start, they start like bringing in like some of the commoners, and it's like, oh. Yeah. Are they still bringing people in? Oh, yeah, the, well, the, the people are being called. The people are being called. These are people that are receiving the honors, receiving oh, their rewards, okay. kind of thing. So they've they, like, got them all lined up. And it's like, and, and they, Honor for being a part of the war of blah, blah, blah. May come yeah. forth, Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> I don't know all the names. No, don't use that name for bloody sake. It popped in my head and I said it. There we go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're the calling all the commoners, like, and, and it's like, this this woman's been rewarded for administrating Bobby. nursing aid to, like, 30 soldiers that are injured and all this kind of stuff, and, um, so it goes on for about 20 minutes or so, and it's like, oh, God, is this ever going to end? And then... Oh, can I, before it ends, can I, like, lean over to her and say, after this, do you all want to go to the pub after? <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, as the way yeah, the way I'm functions go, there well, the way functions go, this feels like it's a function where you've just been kind of like formally invited because of whom you not whom you are, but be you're, you're acquainted with with um, Aragorn and Arwen. It's not like uh, you're not going to get a reward out of this. You're not going to get anything kind of like you're not going to no, any kind of information out of this. It's just like it's just you just just a, a kind of like. A formality of just being like invited along, crying. But this yeah. is the first time we've actually all been got back together, kind of thing, after after a whole year. Um, yeah. So, like I said before, to answer Theo's question, I go, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Sure, I'll join you. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I just nod my head. <laughs> just make sure it's not, you know. No, I always whispers. Don't worry. <laughs> Invite the whole line of people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the one on the end. On the house, on me. Oh, oh on Estelle. Oh, okay. No, 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 not me. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I was, I was trying to emulate. Oh, okay. Theo. <laughs> Theo. Not me. Like, anyway, everyone gets a drink on me. It's been about anyway. been about twenty minutes or so. Um, 
invite the whole room. No, it's been it's about 20 minutes or so, and, I, and to get some for about 30 minutes. And then th- there's like a little bit of a um, a break in the session. Not too sure if this is an interval or if like, they're like, missing a few people or, or whatever. But then there's, the, there's a trumpet blast again from behind you on the gallery. Um, and then... Huh? What? Mark Dylan just wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a trumpet blast, and it, 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 you hear it, um, and it's from the gallery um, where you can see all these banners all hanging up. And um, then there's a, like a just a moment of like some kind of just like a moment of hush, and then um, this this the, 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 this this uh, official. Stands at the front and uh, officially gr- uh, thanks you for all for coming along, and um, <coughs> sorry. Thanks, uh, King <laughs> Aragorn and Queen Arwen for giving recognition to the heroes of um, Minas Tirith and the Battle of Pelnor and the War of the Ring, and um, the King and the Queen stand. They kind of like. Queen Arwen goes over to King Aragorn, takes his hand, and then they slowly depart into a small little chamber, just off to the to there, uh, right hand side. The uh, the guy seems to be who's running the ceremony seems to just to go over to a to a uh, like a like a like a plinth kind of thing, yeah, like a, a plectrum. Takes up a book, folds the book, closes the clasp on it, and then picks the book up, carries the book, and he disappears into a small little room. He kind of leaves the stage, and he disappears to a room on the on the right hand side. And as soon as that door closes, it's like a um, like a heavy lock falls into place, and it reverbs throughout the entire marble chamber. And then a few moments later, everybody starts getting up and starts to leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The boy seems to leave in this marble hall. As if the ceremony's kind of come to its end, it's concluded. Um, are, you, are they doing it like row by row, or is it like everyone just stands up at the same time? Well, they're doing it kind of row by row, but so a few people like mm-hmm. in front of you are standing up and they're like putting their coats back on, like you know, like getting themselves sorted out, you know what I mean? Like stretching their legs a little bit because they've been sat down on these heavy wooden benches for well over an hour. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is any of the fellowship that didn't leave for the Undying Lands here? Any of the fellowship mm-hmm. that didn't leave for the Undying Lands? Um, are, are they in attendance or no? Uh, not really. They were in the attendance for the wedding. But they're not in attendance They're not in attendance here, no. So there's no Legolas, no Gimli or... Okay. okay. It's like they've, they've, they've had their... Um, Coronation. They had their coronation and they had their wedding, um, and that was, and the rewards were given out to the fellowship members, like previously. Now this is like, they've had time to take measure. The city's had time to recognise everybody's deeds and to jot them down. You know what I mean? Like make note of them. It takes a long time to actually make sure that they've given recognition to everybody who's served and everybody who's done something in the Battle of the War of the Ring. Um, now it's their turn yeah mm-hmm. yeah so the fellowship have been dealt with so no they're not in attendance no there's no gladriel or elrond or anything like that they would they were there in the first ceremony um you know about eight eight months beforehand now this is just the general populace's ceremony kind of thing you've been invited as the general populace mm-hmm. <laughs> general populace yeah yeah, that's kind of what we are. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Actually, people are starting to get up and stretch their legs. You know, some of the older folks are starting to like, like bend their backs a little bit and rock their shoulders side to side. You know, they've been they've been sat for quite a while. It's a bit, like, the, some some of them become a little bit more rigid than others. Um. Some of the the children that were there got a little bored. You know what I mean? And there's, like they've been told by the parents now to pick up all the pieces of paper they've left on the floor. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um. You see one of them, like, um, retrieving a, 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 a small wooden, like, almost like a, a wooden horse of Troy on wheels kind of thing. Um, small toy. Small toy. I used to have one of those. Yeah. 
small toy kind of thing. Not not decorated, just a plain wood one. Seems to be just retrieving it. Like go get your go get your horse. Um, and he's retrieving that, and people are picking up their bags and and various other things. This is a it, it, it's around about the end of summer. Okay, so it's around about the equivalent of August and September. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's quite warm in there, but the marble's keeping the place cool. Marble's keeping the place cool, but it's a very very warm day outside. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I stand up and stretch. Okay, Theo, you stand up and stretch, and you notice that there's two Gondorian soldiers who seem to be approaching you on the left hand side. And, I don't know. Uh, and on the right hand side, they seem to be like coming down to your aisle row, which is around about 14, 15, 16. Um, but they're coming to you from the back of the actual marble halls, from the actual main chamber. They're not coming from the front stage there, they're coming from behind. Do I see this as well? <laughs> Oh yeah, they're unmistakable. They've got uh, gleaming, like silvery white armor with um, um, like wings um, carved into them. You know, like, um, really fancy. Yeah. Um, each one of them has a, um, apart from full plate armor, obviously very very shiny, very very brass like. They also have a um, like a pike, you know, like a spear. Yeah, in their right hand. Um, they don't have any shields or anything like that, but they do have these these wonderful deep blue like kind of like um, uh, capes, like tunics, that hang down down to the back of their ankles, and it's a deep blue and it's got imprinted into it like like woven into it the white tree of Gondor into the back to the back of these tunics. Yeah. That's like what Theo's crest or something like that. Oh no, nothing to do with me. <laughs> That's Gondorian, not yeah, yeah. Talos. This is um, Aragorn's like personal guard, almost like yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a, one you see two of them, and they um, the first one goes slightly past your raw aisle, and the second one stops just before your raw aisle, and the left and the right just stop us walking away until they get us. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Pretty much just stop us deep turning from them. Okay. Um, Everybody sees this. Everybody sees these two soldiers. Like, and you just think maybe, maybe it's like, maybe they just like send the soldiers out to like escort all the people, make sure there's no loiterers or anything like that. I look up at Theo, like looking. Are we in trouble? Don't think so. I mean, I haven't done anything wrong yet. Yet. Estelle, you notice all weeds slowly, like, kind of fold away a flick knife and put it into a pocket. What? <clears throat> Yeah, that's I'm scared right now. <laughs> <clears throat> She's I, I not going to, to knife you. It's fine. Mm. I believe we should all start to leave unless the guards stop us otherwise. And if they do stop us, we shall proceed with them as they are, I believe, the royal guard. Am I Gondorian. correct in that? Hey, but that'd be a good assumption. Very good assumption, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I know they're Gondorian, Zeddy, but... Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're... <laughs> yeah. Italy. They're not dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the fortress of them, but, you know... Okay. Okay, everybody else is leaving. They seem to be just, like, moving past the soldiers. The soldiers I... are smiling, you know what I mean? Like, like saying good morning to everybody, and as they go past, and um, yes. mind how you go, make sure you keep all your belongings and all the rest of it, don't lose, yeah. you know... So they're not being aggressive or anything like that. They're being quite quite pleasant about it. They're being very kind of almost almost laid back, but they're still still doing their job. So good. I say to Zabi, could you begin to move as I need to get past you? Oh yeah, sure, sure. And I like move along where Theo wants me to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I begin to leave the row. Okay, you begin to leave the row, and um, Gondorian soldier. I, I take everybody else is still remaining seating, yeah. Uh, I'll move I, in a I, second, yeah. I kind of follow Theo, to be honest, though. Yeah, we're going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gondorian soldier kind of just holds up, a hand, holds, up, holds up his hand. He doesn't actually make contact with you, he doesn't stop, he just says... Um, no, no. Uh, my lord, um, you've been requested an audience with uh, the king. Fair enough. Oh. Aww, we're not going to have that... <clears throat> I believe he probably means all of us as well. Yes, he's, he's, he's kind of he glances across all four of you, or well, all, all, the, okay. the other four. I would say the other four, including all we. Wait, all of us? I say to the guard. Uh, yes, my lady. Um, if you would like to 
remain here until the hall is emptied and then I'm under instruction to escort you to um, one of the conference chambers. Fair enough. Shall we remove ourselves from the road so the people in the middle of the road can <laughs> You can see that they're being exited from the actual other side of the aisle. Oh, okay. Well, no, it's I'll fine. Sit back down there. <laughs> yeah, which you, you do turn around and you notice that that, that is the purpose of the, the, the guards on the other side seem to be escorting people from the other side of the aisle, like from your from your row. We're going, we're going, they said we're going to see the king. He's been granted. He's been granted an audience. You know, there's the king has requested to, to like, spend some say, say, say a word with you or something like that. But he, it, it, he hasn't been yeah. given some too much detail. He's just a, um, it is what we call a, a citadel guard. He, he's just a soldier on duty. He basically. is, but he's he's kind of stationed in this particular hall, this this, you know, um, coronation hall. He's he's not. He's not a city guard, or he's not a soldier, or anything like that. He's just a ceremonial kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I go back to my seat and sit politely. I go, oh, isn't this fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? All right, yes. it's okay. So you are, um, you're, you're main seated. And it takes a while, it takes about 15 minutes or so to clear the entire room. And as the time passes, it's like, what could he make? What could he want? What could he, what can he... It's just Sabi, like, through that bit, Sabi just kind of, like, sits, sits down. And she starts to think of her frostbite. <laughs> it's fine. Where is frostbite? Um, um, he's not in the... Um, not in the city? T- not in the city, no. He's okay. in the outskirts of it. All right, okay. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um... I assume that nobody else... Is anybody else aware of Frostbite, or is it just... Only Theo. Only Theo. Only Theo is aware of Frostbite. I'll, I'll be surprised. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, the, the, the hall eventually clears, kind of thing. And then um, the guards kind of just do one look around, make sure nobody's, like, hiding behind any seats or anything like that, hiding behind any drapes, statues, pillars, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of them returns and says, Hall's clear. And uh, the guard looks over at Theo and says, Would you like to... Uh, w- would you come with me, my lord? Yes, certainly. And I stand in. Stand up. I follow. Okay. I go where he tells me. The guard, the guard looks across everybody. One by one or just as a no, group? No, as a group. Yeah. As, yeah. as a group. He's motioning that all of you just, like, just if you'd like to just accompany yeah, him. Yeah, I, I follow I'm where Theo goes, so... I let Obi and Estelle pass... And then I go up after always kind of past me and say to the guard, In future, you might want to say that with a little bit more confidence. Not being rude or anything, but Theo <laughs> is a normal man, just like you. He puts his um, armor on one leg at a time. <laughs> Although you look at me today and I have no idea. <laughs> one leg at a time. I didn't, I didn't know what to say. Like I was going to say ropes, but then that sounds weird. So he puts his, or his, puts his clothing on one leg at a time, just like any other person. Sabi rolls The guard eyes. doesn't really... Like, he's, he's just following orders. He's just got one job, get you from there yeah, to there. Yeah, but it sounded like he kind of stuttered when he said it. So no, he's trying, trying to like, yeah. make sure him, yeah. like, he's I mean, just a normal guy. He, 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 he doesn't know of you. He's just been yeah, right. He doesn't know of you. He doesn't know like who, what type of person you are. He's just like, okay, just like, all i got to do is just get these people to that room and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> one simple task: get the people in one room. That's it. That's it. Yes. So you're walking down the central aisle, and mm-hmm. you can see it's look behind me. Everyone's there. Yeah. Yeah. You. you oh yeah. You're I the only people in this place. Though. When it's a kind of a hallway, if somebody walks down, you can hear their footsteps like echo. So okay. all you can hear is you walking down this aisle. And it's quite a walk. It's quite like it's about 50, 60 meters or so. Um, and as you're walking down this hall you can hear the echoes of your own footsteps kind of like echo bouncing off the walls and pillars and windows and that um, as you march up towards this huge elaborate marble throne yeah mm-hmm. and hanging above the throne is uh, behind the throne is a huge carving of a, in, in stone of a, of a tree with stars carved in above it and there's various uh, royal banners and signias and things like that all hanging to the left and to the right. Mm. As you approach the steps, 
there's a few steps that lead up to this throne. You can see that there is a, a black carpet with gold trimming. And it goes up to a round, huge round rug, which is just in front of the actual stone throne itself. To the left hand side, you can see there's a small doorway. And to the right hand side, you can see there's a small doorway. And the guard just veers off to the left. Moving towards the door that you saw Queen Arwen and King Aragorn move through about 15 20 minutes earlier. He knocks on the door. And he knocks again. And mm -hmm. the door unlocks. It doesn't open, just unlocks. The guard steps back and says, just motions you to go through the door. Okie dokie. After you. <laughs> I, I was literally going to say ladies first. But, uh, <laughs> well, I beat you to it, go. I open the door and go through. Okay, open the door and you go through and find yourself in a, in a very elaborate study. Oh, wow. Like, there's, a, there's a, a very large table there. It looks like it's been there for centuries. It's solid wood. It's got a leather top, a green leather top. And that surround it, that there's walls of books, tombs, and uh, and scrolls, some um, papers that seem to be shoved into like parcel satchels on the on one shelf, like a huge shelf of like uh, a whole wall of shelves. Um, and just beyond that, you can see that there is a there's a figure who seems to be standing at a plate glass window. Of uh, lead line crisscrossing, um, you can see the daylight just outside. Big hanging drapes um, to help block out the the cold of the evening. Um, the um, curtains are open I'm at the moment. Be, I'm going to be guessing that's the king. Is that the king standing there? Are you you all going to the room? I did say uh, after you to Theo, and he. Oh, no, I know. I went through. So. And I'm following yeah, I, too. I, and I'm I, having I, all we follow next to me. All right, so all you got in the room, yeah? I know Zabby's pretty much been like right behind yeah. me. Yeah, I'm close on your tail, so. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind if Zabby was literally behind Theo. I would have let Zabby go through. Are you first. all? Are you all going in the room? Yeah. Don't try to go in. I'll go in the. I'll go in the room, but I'm going to stay next to the door. Okay. Um, you all go into the room. Um, I obviously move so there's enough room for people to get oh, in. Oh yeah, there's plenty yeah. of room for people to get in. There's plenty of room to just go in. You can you can take three or four steps before being like in the actual room itself. It's it's quite a spacious, mm. open room. It's a very high ceiling. White walls of marble, like I said, a big huge table. Um, and various like documents and maps and scrolls and books and things like that just seem to be like covering the walls. But they all seem to be like um, itemized. You know, they're organized. They're not thrown about like crazy. Mm -hmm. They're, they're well organized, um, and this is this is one of the king's um, antechambers. It's his study area. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's it's he's he stood looking out over out of a window. The window seems to overlook this very very um, lush green. Quick, how do you spell? Uh, what's his name again? And I need to write it down. Aragorn. Aragorn. I'm Okay. Aragorn the second. Yeah, you've met him before. <laughs> yes, I just yeah. want to make sure. You've met him before, yes. Aragorn the second. It's the same person. Just he's a king now. He's the same person. Yeah. He hasn't changed his lifestyle or anything like that. He's still a... King Aragorn. He was a ranger of the north. He has Aragorn. been living rough. He saw me climb and then me Ooh, fall. Strider. Strider, yeah. Strider. Yeah, stole um, Theo's horse. Yeah, the same person. Saw me climb up a rope and fall to my butt. Yeah, that's the same person. Oh, so... no, go away. Why are you on? Hey, what? <laughs> What? Anyway. Oh, there we go. Cortana started talking to me. Oh, oh Cortana. Okay. Um, <laughs> Cortana. Right. Okay. Cortana's probably filling in the details. Um, so you, uh, you go all into the, this room. Uh, don't trust you. Step through the door. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna stay next. You stay into the door. You're the closest one to the door. Um, when you step through the door, um, and you're analysing the room. The door behind you closes and locks. Okay. Nice. Okay. And, uh... 
the guy in the window doesn't say anything. He's just looking out over there. Of the garden. You can see the white tree of Gondor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually surprising me because it's, it's 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 in blossom now. It's in blossom. Whereas before, it was just a basic white tree with no leaves or anything like that. It seems to be springing some kind of white blossom now, which is quite welcoming um, to the people of Minas Tirith and most welcoming to the king. Mm. Yeah, and he has perfect vantage point of being able to actually watch this and study it. Um, you can also see stretching out in front of him a huge promenade um, at the end of the promenade it's flanked by various statues of previous kings and rulers of Gondor many Numorian kings from years old and it stretches out and it seems to be pointing straight towards Mordor towards Osgiliath and Mordor in the distance so the storm clouds of Mordor seem to be just just more like soot clouds now not thunderstorms of red and volcanic lava and things like that they just seem to be like a like like somebody smothered a, a bonfire and now it's just this, this plume of smoke now taking time to dissipate but it it's still there kind of a another reminder of it's not as easy as just getting rid of the dark lord and then waking up the next morning and everything's all you know hunky dory, hunky -dory. <laughs> everything's all amazing yeah it does take time Hmm. A moment passes, and Aragorn turns round, and he seems to smile. And he holds out his hand. He says, "Welcome, friends." It's been a while since we last met. For some he holds out his hand towards <laughs> Theo, and he says, "How are things in Kalos?" They are doing great, my kings. It's, it's um. It's hard work, but it, it's getting there slowly. He uh, he acknowledges that greatly. It's uh, it's the same for Gondor and mm. for Minas Tirith and for the the city ports everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, it's the same for everybody everywhere. It's good to see that people um, have not deserted their purpose of taking on responsibility of. Uh, of the consequences of uh, banishing uh, the dark armies. No, and hope is still around. Oh yes, hope grows every day. And again, he glances out the window, just quickly, and looks at the tree of Gondor. He remembers where he is, and he turns towards Estelle, and he says, My Lady of Tharbad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jai's a bit of jiggling there. Yeah, Jai, Jai went oh, there. Oh, I thought you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he turns his hand. He turns out. And he holds out his hand uh, to Lady Tharbard and uh, to uh, Lady Tharbard, the Lady of Tharbard, and says, uh, "Oh, my lady, how is Tharbard? Um, good news. Uh, good news. I hope." Well, considering how it was from when they got. Caladdle the bridge, but it, it's it's doing all right. I see. I yes. think it's doing all the right. The opening of Friendship Bridge. Yes. Yes. And if anyone asks, I did not agree to that name. Ah, it doesn't really matter what we call things these days. Many people call him like he's got several titles, and he, he like he kind of sympathizes with you. He has several titles, and uh, but the one he's most fond of is Strider. Yes, he kind of he half misses the people him calling that. I remember that name. Hey. Yeah. I remember that name. <laughs> I remember. The name. I think he says that out loud, like not out loud. But yeah, he, he kind of he, he's kind of he misses that one because that's the one people will no longer associate him with the name Strider. Um, and he remembers growing up in Rivendell, and he mentions that where people used to call him Strider of Rivendell. Um. Safeguard his lineage, obviously. Um, something, but now he is King Aragorn the Second of Gondor and of Minas Tirith and the lands beyond. Yeah, the name could have been a lot worse. To be it honest. could have been. <laughs> could have been. Um, but 
you know, it's 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 something that he's he's he's, he's getting accustomed to. And with Arwen's help, um, he's uh, he he's constantly reminded of the pressures of governing and running a city, as well as rewarding and taking care of of those um, victims of, uh, of of the previous events. Mm-hmm. Um, he glances over at Zabi. He glances over at Dontras, and he just smiles. He glances over to all we and he and he makes reference to growing up with all we in Rivendell and that how it would delight Lady Arwen to know that her lady in waiting is still uh, resides in Middle Earth and is still assisting with the Reformation and rebuilding and the restructuring and the safeguarding of Theo and Estelle. (laughs) (laughs) But that's not the reason why he didn't want to call you here to reminiscence about a year ago. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want want to call call you here to reminiscence about what happened a year ago. Things have moved on since then and he points out several things. He says it's all well and good getting rid of the Dark Lord, destroying the ring and Banishing the Nine and all that sort of stuff, but it has left a gap in the workings of evil. Um, there's still creatures that stir in Mordor and in Dol Guldor and Isengard and Agmar. When when he mentions um, uh, Dol Guldor, um, so that made you shiver that that. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, she she doesn't want to remember that place. No, he, he says like it's you know there's still things there's things creatures that stir <coughs> in the deep. Um, but he has soldiers out there doing reconnaissance and um, infiltration and trying to rid the world of these evil creatures, um, trying to discover their secrets and their knowledge and everything seems that they find and discover and report comes back to him in this room. All the books and the knapsacks full of twisted and folded up pieces of paper all notes made by his scouts. He still prefers to use less armoured more skilled scouts than he does actual full-blown armies and soldiers and full clad plate something he learned when he was the Rangers of the North. Guerrilla tactics in hostile territories is something that he'll never forget. However, there's one place that he needs information from. Which is? It's an area that he has sent um, scouts to. But they've been stopped. They've been thwarted by probably orcs, wags, trolls, things like that. Um, And uh, information from that region is very difficult to obtain um, there is a, a a library there of ancient knowledge um, that he would like to procure to safeguard um, one of Arwen's pet projects is to build a huge library in the middle of Minas Tirith to store all this information these stories these tales these books of poetry well that would be nice um and to not have these manuscripts these scrolls fall into the hands of traders or um relic hunters relic hunters 
Yeah, obtainers of antiquities for self-gain. Um, mythical items. Um, things like that need to be kept away from people who do not understand what people of this generation went through in order to obtain the freedom that they have. These items need to be safeguarded. They cannot be allowed to just fall into the hands of of um, the innocent. Just like the One Ring. It fell into the hands of Smeagol, an innocent. It did not understand its history or its knowledge and uh, subsequently brought about a chain of events that led to the Fellowship of the Ring. That led to Mordor and to the destruction and almost the loss of Rodor and Sam. So these items he's vowed to obtain, to put into safekeeping. Here's a vault being created now being created now under the White Mountain in order to store these relics, these these manuscripts of information, these maps, these tombs, these incantations. However, one place on the outskirts of Mordor has proven to be elusive, and he would very much like to invite you to acquire items from this library. Do you know what these items are? He's not really sure. He just knows that they make reference to artifacts and items from ancient times. Um, to records, to archives and things like that from an era that is no longer part of this world. Um, so he can't really say exactly what these might be in reference to. They could be for, for uh, numerous things, but things like that, information like that is probably best kept out of the general populace. He doesn't want this information to be floating around. Nobody wants this information to be floating around. Um, however, he still wants to be available to the people who wish to research it, study it, scholars, and uh, socialize and things like that. But but the items themselves or the the maps that lead to these items or the treasure trails that lead to these items need to be need to be um, acquired um, and the items themselves must be safeguarded these are very important items and we don't want our next little snotling goblin running around with a, another ring of power When Aragorn says that, Dylan Trust looks directly, directly at Zabby as if, well, Smeagol wasn't always a, a twisted creature, he was a hobbit once, so technically you're just called a hobbit a goblin. I look yeah. at Dylan Trust and flick the bird at him. He doesn't say that, he just kind of looks at Zabby as Oh, if, okay, never mind then. <laughs> you've just technically, in, like, this guy has just technically insulted her. No, and she's it wasn't insulting her, it was just they saying he doesn't want the next snotling goblin running around with the next ring of power. Yeah, but he's, he's it's just a metaphor. That, but it's the yeah. Thing, yeah, the way Dylan Trans has perceived it, it's like, you've just insulted an entire race of people. No, not really. It's, it's, it's just it's just a metaphor. It's like he doesn't want. It's it's his, like you say, I don't want the next yeah, troll running around with the next like Excalibur kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's still in trust. Perception oh, still trust just interpreted it as that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not it's, specifically saying that's what he said. You know, he's just yeah. the, that's how he sees yeah. it. Yeah, it's just when Zabby hears that, she just shrugs her shoulders. It could happen either way, to be honest, Your Highness. We realize this has been a year. And you've probably got your own agendas and your own duties to take care of. I know, Lady, my Lady of Tharbad, you've probably got um, a lengthy list of meetings that you need to sit on. And I'm dare say that uh, Theodore of uh, Alost has probably got 
<laughs> I was going to say many, many trading agreements to oversee. Yeah, and supplies to provide. So he can't force you to undergo this, this like take on this um, favor. Z- Zabby like looks at both Estelle and Theo. I go, well, a little adventure wouldn't hurt, would it? <laughs> also, if 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 the fact that you're asking us to be the ones to to take a gander at this place and retrieve said artifacts, would you mind that? that me and whoever I ask to examine them as well? Oh, of course. It's it's more a concern for him that there's no, like, crazy deranged goblin or wag running around in Mordor. Oh, obviously. (laughs) Yes, so you would be working in covert, obviously. So if you are stopped by, um... Uh, garrison of Osgiliath or Rohan or Brownlands or anywhere like that you are not to divulge any information with regards to the, your purpose as to what you are doing there. As far as they are concerned you are just a bunch of freelance venturers wanting to make some small coin um oh I already know the just infiltrating anyway. some begotten orc camp that no longer exists um kind of like collecting for the spoils of war that kind of thing yes I like to call stragglers. <laughs> I don't think you'll go so far as that, but okay. Mm, I've been like that for years, so it's no big difference. Dylan Trask kind of leans back on part of a wall and puts his like, leg up against it as if he's balancing, balancing on one leg. Like, but his back is like against Yeah, the yeah, I know what I mean. Just slouching. And can kind of says also while he's doing this, if we take these things from a specific place, what's to stop um, the inhabitants of said place to come to your vault and try to take back what rightfully belongs in their country or in at the, their at the moment they have part of at the, the moment world. they have no leadership. I mean, there is some small um, bands of orcs that seem to have diversified and elected their a new chieftain or captain or something like that but they're mostly fighting amongst themselves for leadership it's going to take a long time before they can actually like organize themselves into a, another formidable force um there's, there's no, as far as they know his intelligence is telling him that there's no major replacement for sauron um yeah um so they're left leaderless at the moment but that's not to say they're not dangerous in in, in fact because they're probably not following orders or instruction or guidance from a sentient being, then they're probably more dangerous 